A very good evening and thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Lots of very interesting and potentially exciting things to come in the days and weeks ahead from a meteorological standpoint anyway. I happened to get up just, uh, what, half an hour or so ago and the reason why I was in bed during the day is because I work night shift. But um, I just happened to glance out and capture some of these polar stratospheric clouds not a particularly great example i'll show you in just a second how stunning they can be these pictures do not certainly indicate um how stunning these clouds can be but certainly you can see the rainbow like colors within these clouds this was captured looking west from the kitchen um you know barely 10 minutes ago but this is a better example of polar stratospheric clouds here this was a capture ca um, by steve lomas um from northeastern england showing these rather stunning beautiful looking clouds now i did happen to capture these clouds at the very tail end of january earlier this year and lo and behold we did happen to have a major sudden stratospheric warming that took place a few weeks later i did happen to have somebody asking me the question not that long ago um the sightings of polar stratospheric clouds could this be a harbinger of a major sudden stratospheric warming now that's a very interesting question because there's been several times i've seen these clouds and then a major SSW has followed and we'll have a look and see in just a second um, what the models are indicating with regards to the polar vortex because there is some very very fascinating things going on at the moment here but for anybody that's asking the question what is polar stratospheric clouds they tend to form this is off uh, wikipedia by the way good old trustworthy wikipedia they happen to form between 49 and 82,000 feet within the polar stratosphere happens to be observed typically within the high latitudes but when you happen to have a displacement like we have at the moment of the polar vortex courtesy of warming from siberia towards north <coughs> north america excuse me you tend to have the uh, the the displacement of the vortex towards the north atlantic and european side of the pole and it just so happens to be that the core of the pv albeit stretched is draped across the north atlantic and northern uk and where the temperatures are at minus 83 minus 84 celsius at the moment we essentially have the polar vortex within the stratosphere almost bang slap over the top of the northern british isles and ireland as well hence why we're seeing these spectacular displays of nacreous or psc clouds and um the question about whether this is a, a harbinger of you know what what's to come is a very very interesting question indeed now if we happen to look and play through this loop we do have now bear in mind this is the gfs operational so it's one individual model run but the chances are we're going to continue to see these psc clouds as we go through the next several days even through the christmas period because the pv is going to be almost centered still between iceland and scotland and all the way up towards um the northern ural mountains here but watch what happens. We've got this very strong warming taking place over the Eurasian side of the pole. And then that transcends across the Eurasian continent. And then watch this space. That, folks, is, <laughs> in essence, that is an SSW. That is a major sudden stratospheric warming seen by the GFS operational. But to back that up, look at the, look at the, the mean zone of winds. So there has been a tremendous shift in the model output in recent days, a rather dramatic shift, in fact. This is a tweet here by Mark Margavig and showing the strong consensus of a major deceleration of the 10 millibar 
uh, wind speeds here within the, 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 the zonal uh, polar stratosphere. So these strong winds uh, tend to decelerate when you've got disruption, you've got warming from out with towards the pole. Uh, of course, when these are very, very strong, they represent a powerful polar vortex. But you can see here a large consensus in the models now indicating that the winds go below zero. And when they drop off below zero, they reverse. So they go from westerly to an easterly. And that is the hallmark, the signature of a major sudden stratospheric warming. So the models certainly are indicating in, in a strong way now that we could see just after the new year, a uh, reversal of the mean zonal winds within the polar stratosphere and a uh, major sudden stratospheric warming. So let's take this a little bit further here and we'll have a look at the GFS operational, but we'll look at the um, at the 10 HPA temperature anomaly. And you can see the very powerful warming here. And this would be a reversal of the temperature profile of 10 millibars of about 50 Celsius over a matter of 24 to 48 hours. So a very dramatic situation is now very much on the, on the table here. Instead of it being a forecast, a wish cast, clickbait, just trying to get attention on the channel, this looks to be more and more likely. It's still not a guarantee, may I add, but certainly the consensus in the models are becoming stronger and stronger that this looks as if it's going to materialize. Now, this would be the Saturday, the 6th of January. So the end of week one of the January and 2024. Now, if this then propagates the energy of the warming takes place down through the column into the troposphere, the response would probably come towards the end of January. So it's usually two weeks after the SSW actually occurs that we would see the response down in, in the uh, 500 millibar level. And this has been something that I've been highlighting for quite some time. Because if we look at the ECMWF extended weekly, this is week one. And you can see here a mild flat zonal pattern at the moment. Sure, we've got blocking over Canada, over the Northern United States, a very, very warm, Christmas period to come, pro probably one of the warmest on record. Now, even there is a question mark over the UK and Ireland whether we could see one of the warmest Christmases, believe it or not. That would certainly go at slightly against the overall ideas that I've got. But remember what I said all along that the Christmas to New Year period we would turn colder after a, a warm middle portion of the month. And remember, December. It was expected to be average to above average temperatures for the UK and Ireland in general. But you notice here we've got the strong positive AO and NAO in place at the moment here. Now, keeping in mind what's going on within the stratosphere, that is longer down the road. But what may help trigger the pattern to a colder theme before we get there is the Mandulin oscillation. Now, check this out. Isn't this just beautiful? We went through. We started off back at the end of November in an amplified phase one and two. That promotes blocking to the north, cold pattern. We've seen that taking place late month in the early December. We're heading right the way back to that. Look at how the GFS ensemble is amplifying this MJO phase one. That would increase the high latitude blocking potential. Now the stratosphere, like I say, forget about that for now because that is not in play at the moment. We are not seeing any response to the 500 millibar level at this moment in time within the stratosphere. But look at what the ECMWF is indicating. So this is a 30 day period. Let's look at the seven day period in fact, and you can see what happens. Now watch what happens with the reversal of the upper air pattern. As we play through this loop, you can start to see the height rises taking place over northern portions of North America. We're starting to see a trough in the southeastern United States. Now, as we continue to play week by week through early to mid-January, this is period between the 1st and the 8th of January. Look at the difference already. Let's go back to the now. Look at that. This is week one of January. We'll go back to the upcoming seven-day period, and we've got a lot of negatives showing up further south, um, negatives to the north, further south, positive heights 
Wesley flow. But as we play through this loop, you can see the height rise is building over the top. Now that to me is a phase um, one, strong phase one MJO response. And then as we continue to play through this loop, as we move towards the middle and second half of January, this is where I think the major SSW, if it definitely happens, that is, this is where that could start to come into play. We then hand off the MGO favorable coal phases and a favor for, favorable for blocking over to the major SSW response because the MGO may actually rotate back into the warm phases. But if that does happen, we may not need to worry too much because the SSW response may kick in. So this is the period between the, what is this, the 11th through the 18th of January. And we've got that positive initially over the UK and Ireland, which would essentially shut the door to cold weather. But as we start to see the continued progression of this pattern, we pull that ridge to the west, that blocking high over the North Atlantic, and also the trough over Europe then starts to pull westwards towards the UK and Ireland here. And that, folks, is a classic cold pattern for both the eastern United States and the western half of Europe as we move towards the 13th through the 20th of January. So very, very exciting and interesting times to come here on marfoganweather.com on YouTube. So be sure to like. Let YouTube and myself know that you're enjoying the content and also hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate that and let me know that it is worth continuing to make these videos day by day. So currently, where is the cold? It's actually over the heart of Greenland. Temperatures expected, according to the model anyway, of minus 55 Celsius over the central Greenland ice cap. We also have a tremendous outbreak of cold air in the southern portions of China, where we've seen temperatures in Shanghai drop to minus three, minus four Celsius, Beijing well into the minus tens. The temperatures as low as nearly minus 40, by the way, in parts of the Koreas. Japan also experiencing some very, very cold conditions as well. You can see how far south in this chart here, you have to go all the way to the top of the map here to see the Koreas, southern portions of China, this is where the cold air is concentrated in within the middle latitude pattern. Notice here that Europe, very lack, uh, a real lack of cold air because we've got a firm Atlantic driven pattern at the moment. We also have a lack of cold air over North America as well. So the concentration of cold at the moment anyway is over the eastern side of the hemisphere at the moment. But with this very strong warming taking place, you would start to expect colder air to then start to drift across to the other side of the pole towards North America and Western Europe as we go through the next few weeks here. Finally, let's look at Storm Pia, named by the Danish Met Service. We had a deep area of low pressure versus a very powerful high pressure over the North Atlantic. Here comes Pia, seen by the animation on the medial seal pressure chart as it moved out of Iceland towards Scandinavia, very strong northwesterly winds uh, between that tight pressure gradient. We had damage and wind gusts across many areas of the U no northern UK, including Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. But the centre of that low has now then drifted across southern Norway into southern Sweden as well. Very powerful winds on the southern flank of the centre. If we look at the uh, kilometres per hour wind speeds, you can see here very powerful winds across much of the UK, in fact, but they also across the Dutch coast, the German coast, uh, over the Danish area. We've got very powerful northwesterly winds that are causing a storm surge against the coast here of uh, Europe, the near continent. So very serious situation indeed. We also seen some spectacular images of crabbing, uh, both takeoff and landing with aircraft, also battering waves against the coastline of parts of Northern Ireland scotland and uh, also the near continent as well so that system will eventually clear out when we've got another mo uh, system moving in off the atlantic we'll look at the details of the run-up to christmas in tomorrow's video so stay tuned for that but plenty of things going on trying to keep up with everything at the moment is pretty tough to do so but be sure to like share and subscribe and i'll see you again in tomorrow's video so enjoy the rest of your evening bye for now